Welcome to this video lecture. Today we're going to start talking about chapter 3, which is one-dimensional steady-state conduction. Specifically, we're going to begin talking about the plane wall. We've talked about this problem. We've solved the heat diffusion equation, or aka the heat equation, in a lot of different circumstances. So um, I want to discuss, first of all, why is this an important problem to solve? So this is actually a, a really common geometry in many different types of thermal systems. So if you think about it, buildings have walls, processing industries have walls, furnaces, ovens, reactors, transportation industry, airplanes or automobiles, they have walls that we need to discuss, um, figure out how heat is getting in or out of those systems and certainly refrigeration. So while we've talked about just a plain wall, you could use a plain wall type analysis for a lot of different systems, whether it's an actual plain wall or not. So one of the implications of a plain wall is that you're going to have some type of fluid on one side of the wall and another type of fluid on the other side of the wall. And so you've got to figure out how much heat you're losing through those walls. So certainly if this is a building, you may have the side walls of the system, but you may also have a floor to, to consider and a ceiling or a roof to consider. <clears throat> One of the assumptions, well there are a lot of different assumptions that we'll make when we're talking about plain walls. So, as we've discussed several times, one of the main assumptions that we make is that the temperature variation is only through the wall depth-wise. So we would consider temperature variations in this direction, or alternatively here if we're talking about a roof or ceiling. <clears throat> we're not considering temperature variations in this, these other directions or in and out of the screen, which would be the Y and the Z directions respectively. <clears throat> So one of the assumptions that we made, what this implies, is that um, we are ignoring what may be happening on the corners. So for example, if this is a house, a flat roofed house, you may have sunlight hitting here, you may also have a different material here than you would have on the walls. So we could certainly treat this as a plain wall, and this as a different type of plain wall. It would be exposed to different things and would be made out of different materials, so we could analyze those two as separate things, and then essentially we'd be ignoring what's sort of happening here on the corners or on the edges. We'd also be assuming that there's a pretty good circulation here on this air on the inside and the air on the outside, so within the air that kind of uniformly distributes heat transfer convection-wise, so you may have this, you could be exposed to the same temperature air at any point along that wall, which allows you to neglect temperature variations in that direction. <clears throat> so there's also, when we talk about plane walls, a lot of the analysis we're going to do is going to use these following assumptions. We're going to assume that you have a constant thermal conductivity, that your thermal conductivity doesn't vary as a function of temperature or as a function of distance. We're also going to assume that our systems are at steady state, there's no accumulation happening, and within the walls themselves we're going to assume that there is no generation. So under these specific set of circumstances we would get a certain solution for the heat equation. If one of these circumstances changed we'd have to resolve the heat equation and we'd get a different form of the solution as we've already experienced in chapter 2. So these special cases, they lead to having constant flux with respect to x. And they're also going to allow us to use something called the thermal resistance method, which we're going to develop after we've talked a little bit more about plane walls. So again, with a plane wall, we're going to assume that going from here all the way through the wall, if we were to measure and plot our flux going through as a function of x, we would see that it's constant. And that is because our temperature is going to be a straight line. So according to Fourier's law, <clears throat> our flux is uh, is equal to minus k times dt dx. So if dt dx is constant as k is constant, then our flux as a function of x will also be constant. This is a really important implication and, and hopefully you'll start to grasp this and internalize it as we go. <clears throat> so in this special case of the plane wall, again, we're going to be considering just one one wall at a time, but we could take up the added effect of all of those walls if we're analyzing something like a furnace or a building. So in this special case, when we have constant thermal, thermal conductivity, steady state, and no generation, 
This is the form of the heat equation. If you want to go back and remember how to integrate this, you can go back and see some of the previous video lectures where we did this several times for different boundary conditions and um, different circumstances. But when we integrate it in this particular form, we end up with just the equation of a line. Our temperature profile is the equation of a line. So because the second derivative of temperature with respect to x is 0, second derivative is 0, that means the first derivative is constant. So that means the slope of our temperature profile is constant, meaning it's just a straight line. So adding in the boundary conditions, we have constant surface temperature boundary conditions. We could use those boundary conditions to solve for C1 and C2. We end up with a more specific form of the temperature profile in this particular instance that says that our temperature as a function of x is equal to the, t the overall temperature difference, where we'd have TS2 minus TS1, and if we have x going this way, and here at the far right side of the wall we have x equal to L. Um, this is how our temperature profile looks. So you can see it's still the equation of a straight line where our slope of that line is given here, which would also be equal to our dt dx. So if we were to take our temperature profile and differentiate that, multiply it by minus k and the area, the cross-sectional area that is normal to the flow of heat, then we end up getting a flux that is indeed constant. Notice that x does not appear anywhere in here. So it's important to sort of commit these things to memory for these particular instances. Um, when we have a plane wall with constant k, steady state, and no generation, we see that our temperature profile is a straight line and our flux our flux is constant and actually this is our flow of heat that's also constant as a function of x.